Welcome back to Nickelodeon. This comic corner classic slash non classics. This is episode number twelve hundred and twenty seven and double shot number twelve hundred and no, excuse me, eleven hundred and twenty one. Okay. I'm covering the first two trades that collect the Rick Grayson era for the Nightwing book. First up, it's the opening trade. Nightwing, Night Terrors. Oh boy, this crap. Okay, now I'm not. Now the story itself is fine. I have no problem with the story. It's him being Rick Grayson is complete utter nonsense. I mean, I'm sure probably a lot of people were not really big fans of this when this happened. Yeah, well, by the way, despite this scar in his forehead you see here on the cover, his scar looks nothing like that. Yeah, that's actually nothing more than a big fat lie. And you know something strange about these issues? Okay, now, the thing is, I'm covering for two straight trades, 13 issues. And in 13 issues, this book went through, and this is no joke. Now, this is the first time I have seen this since Superman during the first year of the run. This book went through, and there's 13 issues... Five writers. No joke. Five writers actually started with issue number, I don't know, 41. Where apparently they just kept changing writers. Because the writer just probably just didn't care. And the fact this book, book is probably driven by editorial mandate. Yes. Now the opening issue of this Night Terrors arc is written by Ben Percy. And you know what the strange thing is? This is the last comic he wrote for DC. Yes, the last one, because he left and went to Marvel. My theory of the reason why this happened was because he didn't like this at all. He was not really a big fan of the whole Rick Grayson stuff, so he's like, okay, I'll just do the opening issue and just hand it off to somebody else. That somebody else being Scott Lobdell. And then he, he, he came in issue 51, and left with issue 58. Like, okay. At least he kind of finished up the story. Yes. Night Terrors is simply put this. Well, I'm calling him Dick. Dick Grace, I'm not calling him Rick because it's stupid. Yes, I'm sure a lot of people can agree with me. Now, Bloodhaven is not as corrupt as it was during Chuck Dixon. Oh no, it's actually a pretty decent place. The way it has been depicted. It was like at the start of it. Oh look, here is Rick. Ra here is Dick Grayson with his scar. Wow, such a big fat marketing lie. Yes, his scar is a complete reverse of how it was in how it was in the cover. Now, in case you're curious, though, how the heck did this scar come about? He got shot in the head by KG Beast and Batman number fifty-five. Yeah, this came just. Five issues after the controversial 50 came out that I'm sure Tom King was told to do this. I'm sure he probably wanted nothing to do with this at all. I guess DC must have felt as though the book needed to be taken a new direction. A direction that nobody wanted. So, Dick Grayson gets shot in the head. So, what do they do? Shave most of his nice hair off and have him stop wearing a Nightwing costume. Though well, apparently he retained, even though he's lost some of his memories, he at least retains his... His, his knowledge of martial arts, which I do appreciate the fact that he did. Plus, I love the artwork. Yeah, the artwork is actually pretty damn good. The artwork in here is, well, it's done by, you would not believe this. This book basically contains issues, let's see, I think it's like 50, it is 50, 56. Seven issues. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven artists. For six issues, you have Chris Mayhem, Travis Moore, Gary Brown, David Gerfers, Claus Johnson, Patrick Zerger, and Will Conrad. The cover art is done by Chris Muham and Nick Ferrari. Now, despite the fact I'm not really a big fan of the Rick Grayson stuff, at least it's got good artwork with it. Yes. Book starts off with Dick Grayson reading a newspaper and, of course, a woman dropping her... Well, coffee pot because she's basically in the middle of a holdup. 
We have sort of sur seen the surgery for Dick Grayson. And, of course, he's able to stop a guy who, well, trying to hold up a diner. Well, apparently he still got money on him. Oh, yeah, and apparently the way he dresses now for this, like, okay, he wears a black leather jacket, a white T-shirt, jeans that look like it's got patches on it, and we see flashbacks of Dick Grayson's time as Robin. Though, for some reason they have him in the costume that, well, he was seen other times in flashback. Batman, on the other hand, is wearing his Jim Lee costume. Yeah, for some reason, the artist decided to put him in this outfit, despite the fact that when he was Robin, he never wore this attire at all. It just... This is basically some I've read pre-Flashpoint. Heck, even in cartoons... Yes, the Batman animated series. Dick Grayson never wore pants. It was always, like, short shorts. That's basically what he wore. That was all Tim Drake's doing doing that. Yeah, for some reason, anybody can tell this. This this costume is a clear ripoff of, of Tim Drake's costume. So we have this mysterious person holding this, this group of people hostage. Who just happens to be... The Scarecrow! Yep, the Scarecrow is here because the book is called Night Terrors. So of course the Scarecrow is here. Now, in this current continuity, Scarecrow was the first person that Grace and Fires Robin. In pre-Flashpoint, that was Tim Drake's first villain. No joke about that. That was actually his first villain. I'm not really sure why they kind of switched around for, but that's basically what it is. So, we see a flashback of Dick Grayson's time when he was Robin, and he basically take on Jonathan Crane, which he's put in jail. And then we have sort of a underground box that we see basically what Dick Grayson's up to. This underground boxing match plays pool, rides a motorcycle, goes to be a jog, and we see Jonathan Crane where he apparently decides to break Arkham Asylum. Well, it forms a way to break out with someone wearing this shirt. Um, last time I checked, the shirt like this, I highly doubt someone with Arkham Asylum wearing this shirt because, well, the way I've seen it, basically, Arkham Asylum was depicted. Usually the outfits that the, the inmates wear are simple prison attire. Why the heck is he wearing this plaid t-shirt? No idea. And then we say, Dick Grayson, get a job. Well... <laughs> Becoming a cabbie. Yep, becomes a taxi driver. And this is his job for pretty much his entire era when he's Vic Grayson. Driving a cab. I'm like, okay, fine. So, and then we see a guard comes to visit Jonathan Crane. Apparently he's committed suicide. Turns out, nope, he didn't commit suicide. He had a, basically a poison tooth. And, well, he breaks out. And then we see Dick Grayson. Basically getting up, basically preparing for work. Apparently he's sleeping on someone's couch. Like, that's what it looks like. It looks like he's sleeping in some fancy bed. And... Apparently he's been sleeping, and not in his own bed, but actually someone else's bed. Like, oh, been robbed. <laughs> yeah, where this couple comes home, their home basically has been lived in. Yeah, Dick, well, Dick Grayson, apparently, because he's forgot his memory. Oh, yeah, and he runs into Barbara Gordon. Yeah, Barbara Gordon, during these uh, this, these early issues of the Rick Grayson stuff, she popped up a lot during these issues. Despite the fact she's got her own solo title. Yep. She pops up here. Like I said, just because, oh, yeah, we all see the first appearance of B. Yes. This black woman who becomes Dick Grayson's girlfriend during this period of time. Yep. By the way, despite the fact this whole Rick Grayson stuff started issue 50, it actually kind of basically has an epilogue with issue 76 with Dick Grayson put back on the costume again. It was actually just very recently that he finally decided to put back on the costume after DC finally realizing, though, that Rick Grayson wasn't working. Probably due to the fact that everybody was hating it. Why the heck it took so long, no idea. So we see that, well, Dick Grayson has has apparently forgotten, well, he does remember Barbara, somewhat. Like, he does remember he does he, he was Robin. He apparently lost most of his memory while being shot in the frickin' head. And we see another flashback of Robin, Dick Grayson was Robin, and he's fighting the Scarecrow again. Oh yeah, he takes out sticks. 
Oh yeah, his new prototype, his new his batons that he uses as Nightwing. Yes, why the heck? Now, here's the thing. If anybody's ever read Dick Grayson's time as Robin in some of the early stuff, or any flashback stuff, he never had these until he was Nightwing. Why the heck that that pretty much Ben Percy squeezes in? Also, for some reason, no idea why, well, we have Barbara Gordon's new costume, despite the fact this is not technically the right costume. Well, it's got the wrong color scheme to it. And... I'm not really a big fan of this attire. A lot of people can easily point out, though, its biggest problem. The mask. Though this one basically is a little bit, because a little more of a face. But I'm like, what in the world is wrong with a cow? Yes. A lot of people basically have pointed now, out. Now, I agree with with Louis Lovehall when it comes to the current backer costume. Well, in the form of the mask, per se. That... The previous costume was fine. I had no problem with the previous costume. It was perfectly fine. If you want to change the costume, fine. Whatever. That's not the issue. But why the heck did you make make her lose her freaking cow? All the previous back rows are cows. Here is just... Oh, though at least here, the is drawn a little bit better. Oh yeah, and it's purple with the blue cape, despite the fact that's not the right color scheme. Yes, despite the fact that it's not the correct color scheme, but that is the costume. Also, <laughs> in Bloodhaven, have a bat burger. Because, of course, it does. Yeah, that's something new that the current continuity established. Because this, this McDonald's ripoff did not exist pre-Flashpoint. My only guess is the reason why they clued this in was because on the in the Arrowverse, they had this franchise fast food place that's on Flash and Arrow... So I guess that DC was like, okay, let's do that for Batman. <laughs> and have it called Bat Burger. Okay, fine. We see Dick Grayson basically taking some people around. We used to take a sub Odie. And we see this mysterious person, possibly Dick. So, in his subway headquarters, and I love this. We see his four, you see four of his costumes. Though, here's the thing about these costumes. Okay. We see the George Perez costume from the 80s, the disco attire. We see his alpha from the 90s, one of the first half of the 90s. For some reason, the alpha he wore from about 1996 up until about 2009, that's not here for some reason. Yet, the first two costumes are here, and the costumes he wore in his current continuity. I mean, look, look at this. Because, yeah, George Perez, early 90s. New 52, this is during the Kyle Higgins run. And this is the current attire. Okay, um, last time I checked, Dick Grace has gone through five costumes, not four. Yeah, for some reason, apparently DC has forgotten that costume exists. Despite the fact, I, I'm trying to remember, I think it was... I'm not sure who designed that costume. I think it may, it may have been whoever the artist was for that Nightwing miniseries. And what does Dick Grayson do? Burn down his own headquarters. Just cause. And then, with that, Ben Percy's done. That was his last issue. With issue 51, Dick Grayson takes over. Not Dick Grayson. Uh, Scott Liddell takes up with Fabian Nassiza as the co-writer for about a few issues. Yeah, he does his issues 51, 52. Uh, not 52, 56. And then he leaves. And then... For 57 to 59, Scott with those last few issues, different co-writer. Yep, as in the case of Ben Percy's time with DC, he wrote a lot of good comic books. His Green Arrow was actually pretty decent, well, his Rebirth stuff was really good. He, I mean, the first comic he wrote was Detective Comics. He wrote two issues of that, and then he next did Green Arrow. He did this book for two years, starting in 2015. With DCU stuff during the last 12 issues of the previous volume. And then did the first 30 issues of the most recent volume for the series. Including the first annual. And of course also when he was working on that. He also worked on Teen Titans. Which he left. After 19 issues. And once he left those two books. He got moved. Of course he also worked on. Uh, he also co-wrote an issue of Deathstroke. And Titans because of the last was contract crossover. And then he moved to here. The last comic he wrote. And he was on this book for seven issues. And then he left. Yep, 
he left. Why in the world he left? No idea. I mean, the only comic he did, probably I can think of, between this comic book and before he moved over to Marvel, was he worked on a James Bond comic called James Bond Black Box. That's it. Now, currently, he's the writer for Wolverine and X-Force. Now, we're starting the Scott Lobdell issues. So, we have this detective. By the way, 51 is the first, his first appearance. I think his most last appearance to me was X-52. So, basically, he sees the, oh, we have this Nightwing costume. I'll put it on. We also have this firefighter who acts as his partner. So, we apparently seen flashback Dick Grayson taking on what well, he was Nightwing. Took on freaking Two-Face at some point. And we see apparently something similar to the minus effect where apparently Dick Grayson is seeing, well, Damien and Batgirl, Baby and Barbara, but the faces are swirled. It's kind of similar to, to, to the to the Minos effect. Yeah, the Minos effect is input like those little special like contact lenses that basically when people see you when, when, they, when you wear them, that all they see is a swirled face. Minos himself, for some reason, they never... It was never shown what his actual face looked like because his face was always swirled. Though he was supposed to be dead, Huntress killed him, though he came back in this book, though he apparently died again. It's quite weird. This is probably his representation of basically seeing, well, by Batgirl and, and Robin. Though apparently he was... Yeah, it was all a dream sequence. He was sleeping out of the bar. Oh, yeah, at the bar. He apparently tips over a bowl of pretzels and tosses up his beer into the guy's face. And B, his future girlfriend, is working the bar. Oh, yeah, and also Alfred is there. Yep, Alfred is there. Oh, yeah, Barbara tries to get Dick to remember. Nope. Alfred? Not really. Yeah, the Scarecrow is still around. And, of course, well, Dick, Dick gets his own. Still, still drives a taxi. More people around. And, of course, beats up a guy. And then we see the, the new the new replacement Nightwing. Yes, Lovedell was the one who started something that I was not a really big fan of. The team of Nightwing. So, I like the fact they're actually using the costumes. Yeah, and here's the thing about the Nightwings. Is that the the guy who's the one the regular Nightwing costume, he is actually detective. The one in the 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 first costume, one in the current continuity, that one is worn by a firefighter, and the other two, the original costume, the classic ones, those are worn by um uh, brother and sister Dale, maybe a little bit later. So we slowly put together the team of Nightwings, which Dick Race is part of. Also, because the fact that apparently DC writer, whoever writes this book, apparently remembers that. This detective, this female detective, Detective Saba Odi, is apparently the only supporting character for Dick Grayson, despite the fact he had a supporting cast. That apparently, Sam Humphrey decided to drop in the garbage. For no reason. But yet, writers still keep this character around. I'm like, um, what about the rest of the supporting cast that that Tim Sealer set up? Nope. Just... Toss them aside. Do nothing with them. You see, between when 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 they had the previous flyer for the series, when I read, when I, when I read about when I re read the issues himself. Basically, between we finished like this week, and he moved David, David Grayson's run. Still the same supporting cast, aside from the fact that a new writer, supporting cast didn't change. Apparently, that was not the mo for this book. It seems as though like you bring a new, you bring, you have Tim Seeley's great supporting cast he had. And then as soon as he lived, with the exception of one character, this one character, everybody else was dropped. For no reason. This matter of fact, one of whom actually slept with Dick Grayson. Oh yeah, and let's have him basically have a new girlfriend here. So Dick decides to, well, suit up and we have, well, <laughs> we have the other Nightwings. We have Malcolm Hutch, who basically comes to post on the Red Nightwing costume. They have Zake Edwards and Colleen Edwards. Zake is from the 10th Police Department. He's from Vice. And in the case of Colleen, Colleen Edwards, his sister, she's from the 14th Precinct. Malcolm is the deputy chief of the police department. Yep, and they and he and this detective gives him the costumes. And they are the Nightwings. Up until 76. So, 
and a dick runs into the new Nightwing. Now, because he's a cop, he carries a gun. Now, if Batman saw this, he'd be like, okay, none of you all are supposed to be in these costumes. Get out of those costumes right now. They belong to him. Give up those costumes. That's if Batman was here. But here's the strange thing about this book. Batman never shows up in this book at all. That's one thing I did not like about this book. There's no appearance by Batman. Yeah. Apparently, even though, yes, it's not Batman's book, fine, whatever. But have him show up. Nope. So, basically, Dick decides to sort of, in a way, like, sees what's going on, but he's not stupid. So, he decides to, well, he helps with the owner of the cab company and sees that, well, we need he needs to do something. So, he pretty much start, he start, he start eating, he starts eating B. And, of course, then, of course, well, then we have the Scarecrow. And I love this attire. Like, apparently the artist decided to rip off the the attire that the Scarecrow wore in Bat New Batman Adventures. Yeah, this is almost the same exact attire. How? The Hangman Noose. I thought, wow, that's quite something. Yep, so, Emmett's all constant what's happening. And, of course, we have, apparently Dick Grayson is receiving... Therapy sessions from Dr. Crane. Though he doesn't know it's Dr. Crane. Yep. He doesn't know. Oh, in case you're curious though. Has Scarecrow ever found out that Dick Grace was ever Robin or Nightwing? The answer is no. He never found out. As far as I can tell, he never did. I'm trying to think. I don't think it was any any one of the Batman villains ever found out Dick Grayson was either Robin or Nightwing. The only I can tell probably he did was probably the Joker. Aside from him, I don't think anybody else even bothered. So, yeah, and, and, and the temporary Nightwing acts like a police officer to gather up evidence, but thinks it's a costume. He doesn't have to basically fingerprints. So, and then we see Dick here having a brief image of Two Face, Scarecrow, and frickin' Deathstroke. Yep. So. So apparently, then we have we see a brief flashback of Dick Grayson as Robin, and then we have apparently that oh yeah he's been clear that Dick Grayson has been cleared, starts dating B, and then of course he starts Scarecrow starts doing his little moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he starts making a move on basically everybody. So he's, he attacks Jacob Sabote, and of course, well the Air Nightwings decide to help out. Yep. Yep, the Nightwing team, basically. Of course, Dick Grayson decides to put on this gray mask. Still wearing regular clothes. So he adopts he, he sort of a more he a more professional costume later on. Yep. And, of course, we have these team of Nightwings basically fighting Scarecrow. Yeah, five guys fighting one person. Heck, Batman doesn't have this much, much big problem. Why does that take five guys to take on one supervillain like the freaking Scarecrow? Makes no freaking sense at all. Yep. And in the end, he gets beaten by Dick Grayson and the other Nightwing. And the detective's like, oh, thank you. But try to say it out of the way. Like, okay, fine. Team of Heroes. And that's it for this volume. Yep. It's an interesting story, to say the least. But the only thing I'm not really a big fan of is the Rick Grayson stuff. Yeah, aside from that, and now... There are two major problems I have with this. Number one, Rick Grayson. Stupid idea. A lot of people probably thought this was a stupid idea. Probably the reason why that even when Tindy probably saw all this himself, we think our Batman like, hey, this is stupid. I'm putting it back in the costume. I don't care what you editors say. I'm putting this back in this damn costume. So basically for Night Terrors, I mean, I like the fact Scarecrow was even here. That was quite nice. I, I'm going to give the book roughly a 9 out of 10. I wouldn't give it a 9.5, but the biggest problem with the, the issues were the change of writers. And now I'm moving on to Burn Bank, the second of four trades of this era. Oh yeah, and once again we have another time where the creative team changes. Yep. <laughs> this is quite strange though. Yet Marvel, whenever they do this, they have to keep hitting the restart button. DC just keeps on going. 
They don't have to hit the restart button because they know their readers. They, 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 even they recognize, though, that the constant relaunches, just because New Red comes on board, it's utter stupidity. So, for the first, get this, for the first two issues of this trade, it's all Scott Liddell. Oh, by the way, Dick Grayson has a meeting with Joker's daughter. This is her most recent appearance that day. I kind of forgot she showed up in this book. Yep, and this is a quick little two-parter. Yep, so basically, Dick Grayson, oh yeah, and by the way, his new costume that he sports for pretty much the rest of his time before he, he puts on Nightmare costume again. Yeah, this is his costume. Yep, this this suit. I'm like, it's okay, it's perfectly fine. So, his sacred relation would be seriously... Now we have the female Nightwing showing up. By the way, not the first female Nightwing. We have Colleen Edwards is not the first female Nightwing. The first one was actually somebody Dick Grayson slept with in the in the in the original volume from the 90s. Well, actually, this happened with the the storyline. Uh, I think it was Blood Brothers. Yeah, who was actually his landlady, Clarice. Yeah, she became briefly Nightwing. Well, a female Nightwing for a very brief period of time. So. Maybe Lobdell probably get the inspiration from that to have a female on Nightwing. It's possible, say the least. But yeah, this team is made up of three detectives, three officers, three police officers, and a firefighter. I'm like, okay, not a bad idea. Yep, so still progressing in relationship. We see Barbara here, me to B. And then we have the Joker's daughter trying to take out a criminal mastermind. By the way, she actually changes her outfit. Yes, for some reason, she decided to change her attire. My only guess is the reason why she's here. Because of Del, she must he must really like this character. So her current attire is you see her Joker face mask. Looks like it's so, so looks like it's sort of not stitched down like what we've seen before. But apparently she's wearing white opera gloves, purple pants, a purple tank top, and green suspenders. Making her more like the actual Joker. Yes, why the heck they change her attire for? I have no idea. Oh, and by the way, her real name is Dula Dent. Yeah. Though, why the change of look? I have no idea. It's quite weird. Mm -hmm. So apparently, Dick raised me to with the current, well, the current Nightwing, the one who's basically filling in for him while he basically suffered amnesia. By the way, Joker's R is only here just for this quick little two-parter. Oh yeah, and we have Pat, Z we have Zach Z uh, Kirplin who takes over as the co-writer from Fame and the Up. Yeah, I've never heard the reason for this. We also have some bomb trying to blow up somebody. The Joker's R herself was taken out after the end of 58. For from 59, we have a new writer taking the book, Dan Jurgens, a good writer. Now. The difference between him and Lobdell, Lobdell has a little bit of experience writing Nightwing, mostly when he shows up in the pages of Red Hood and the Outlaws. Dan Jurgens, on the other hand, uh, from what I can tell, I didn't think he had any experience writing Nightwing. I thought, in my opinion, now him taking the book was kind of a bad choice. Now, nothing gives him as a writer. I think he's a great writer. But writing Nightwing, it's a bit different from him. Like, I love his accent. I thought it was recent. Well, that was really good. And I tend to argue, like, okay, if you're going to have a writer take out the book, why not, I don't know, contact Chuck Dixon? I mean, when was the last time he wrote this book? Uh, let me think. That must have been, like, 2000 freaking 5. You could have him come back. Nope. Don't bother to do that for some strange reason. Yeah, don't have Chuck Dixon come back, but Dan Jurgens okay. Though I have heard that Chuck Dixon doesn't get along well with DC editorial. So now we have this storyline dealing with this, basically this tar pit ripoff named Blood, named, named, no, it's Bloodburn. Also, Chris Moonham basically takes over as the artist for, this, for these issues. And his art looks very similar to Neil Adams. Yes, anybody can tell by looking at this. This oh, this uh, this artwork is 
very similar to Neil Adams' art style. Neil Adams is a great artist. Don't get me wrong about that. It seems as though this particular artist tends to use a very similar style to, well, Neil Adams. Also, it's pointed out though in issue fifty when Dick, when the other Dick Grace, when the other Nightwing shows up, apparently there's been no Nightwing for four months. Yes, four months apparently passed by between issues forty nine and fifty. Like, okay, so maybe you're spending time in traction. I'm not really sure. So, yeah, oh yeah, and also in these issues, Dick Grace has to tell his girlfriend about his vigilante work. Also, he works with the firefighter. He works with Malcolm to save a group from a fire while also finding his new villain named um, Burbank. Which anybody can tell by looking at this guy, he looks like a ripoff of the character Tarpet from Flash. Yep, that's the deal with this character. He's a Flash villain ripoff. Yeah, so we have a fire version of Tarpet. Okay, fine. And for the next few issues, they fight him. B is very supportive of the vigilante work. And they eventually do find out who Burbank is. He's actually... Well, this particular... Bur after basically fighting him. Yeah, and of course, Zeke, who was actually one of the... Now he gets injured. And it turns out, though, it's this woman's father. Who dies. In the hospital. Yep. And then we have something interesting happen. Well, basically, 60 is the debut of the new costume. Yeah, get rid of that other street clothes, have a more professional costume. Yep, apparently Dick Grayson's wearing this for quite some time. So, he's working with the Nightwings while wearing this costume. He tells B about what's going on. And then we have, and then we have apparently where they make out. And then next time you see Dick Grayson, he's apparently in bed with B. And they've already had sex. How can I tell? They're both naked. That's all I could tell. But at least the artist basically is classy enough not to show these rear end or show one of her... Well, they show a little bit of her, her, one of her breasts. But yeah, and if we can tell by looking at this particular scene, yeah, she's completely naked. Yeah, just the out of those two having sex. And then something more awesome happens. We see this strange robot pop up. Who is it? Oh, yes. Villain, it's, a, it's a year villain tie-in. We have Lex Luthor making a deal with... William Cobb, Dick Grayson's great grandpa. <laughs> Why the? I'm like, when I originally saw this last year, I'm like, wow, William Cobb. I haven't seen you since Forever Arkham War, when you got re-imprisoned by Batman when he when he returned. Yeah, that was actually a really interesting ending to this book. Oh yeah, the storyline itself was okay at best. It was a I mean, yeah, I'm not really a big fan, like I said, of the Rick Grace or the team with Nightwings. The Joker's daughter is probably something that Labdell probably felt like he had to do. And then he decided to leave. And here's something strange, though. This run was so short, it's barely brought up at all. I think most people forget he was even on Nightwing because how short this, this run was. Yeah, Labdell's run was only just eight issues. I'm like, really? Eight? That's like slightly longer than, than Ben Percy's time with the book. But Dan Jurgens is still the writer. He came on 59 and is still the writer. 76 is the most recent issue to come out. And that makes it about, let's see, 10 plus 7. It's like, wow, 18 issues. What makes it, which makes Dan Jurgens' current run longer than all the previous runs like almost as like right now currently it's the second longest run of the book right now on on the current run. I mean it's almost the half the length of the Tim Seeley run. Yes. Though I think the Joker Star set was pretty decent when it was. It's not terrible. Though I kinda think that Love Dell probably threw in Joker's Daughter. Probably because the fact that he liked the character so much. And he's probably like, okay, I'm gonna lead the book, so I'm gonna do this one last joke do this Joker Star two part and that's it. And that's last year, Joker's Darkness. I think she's shown up since then. I haven't seen her pop up in any year of book, but that two-parter for Decent 58, that's the most recent time she show up in the comic books. And the thing is, you're probably asking, does Dick Grayson have any back history 
with Joker's daughter. As far as I can tell, unlike the Scarecrow, which he does have history with, Joker's daughter, I don't think he ever did. Because I don't think he ever met Joker's daughter. Not that I can think of, no. So he's like the fact Love Devil saw something different. And then we have Jerks in the book, which could be a little better, per se. I mean, I like the fact that Grayson's wearing a, a costume, but not the Nightmare costume, per se. And I like the fact his, his relationship would be basically feel like a continuation. I mean, one thing at least I appreciate about these issues, at least it felt as though it's still the same exact story. I like previously where it just kept changing writers and just dropping the supporting cast for no reason. But yeah, it's interesting to say the least, but I'm really going to look for, I'm, but what I'm really looking forward to is the talent stuff, which is coming the very next trade. I'm so looking forward to that because, in my opinion, for the whole Rick Grayson stuff, I thought the talent stuff was the most interesting thing they did with it. Because the talent stuff was actually something that was, this was actually something that was brought up during Scott Snyder's run for Batman. And I like the fact Jurgens brought this back up because he has done this in the past where he basically, well, he saw something in another book, he brings up another book he's working on. He did this also with, I believe, like, this has also happened one time before also with, General Zod, where they follow up with him after what happened with him in Action Comics brought up again in Hollow Drunk or Lantern Corps. So at least Dan Jorgens has followed with something that Scott Snyder did, which kudos. Love it. Yep, but that's all I gotta say for the two trades. They're interesting to say at least. Not much right at home out when he's two, but definitely looking forward to it. I was thinking of doing now I was originally planning also doing Black Club because how late it's getting, I'm gonna probably have to save for tomorrow. Well, the only reason is because I've been out most of the day, and I haven't chance to much anything for anime today. So, expect to view that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yep, and maybe I'll get a chance to start with Trinity Seven tomorrow. Okay, but yeah, until we see you all in the next video. Bye.